Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with this week's edition of Propaganda Watch. And in this series, we've looked at a lot of different types of government-sponsored or government-issued propaganda, but how about internal government propaganda? Government propaganda that's produced by and for agencies and agents of the federal government. For example, what am I talking about? (laughs) Oh, just hot steaming piles of trash like this. Captain's Log, Stardate 8.23.2110. We received a distress call from the planet Notax in the ATAT system. According to their leaders, the planet civilization has degraded to anarchy. Chaos rules over order. We sent a landing party to assess the situation and report back. We hope we're not too late. I'm receiving incoming reports from the landing party. But it's difficult to hear, Captain. There's poor reception. Fascinating. Then can't you do something? Attempting to modulate the frequency now. Sorry about the uniforms, Captain. The dry cleaner gave me the wrong order. Starlight coffee while you wait, sir. It's better than McDonald's and only twice the price. No can do, yeoman. I've already spent my per diem for the day. Coming in clear now, Captain. Shall I open a channel? Yes, on screen. Lieutenant Mackey, report. Yes, sir. It's worse than we thought. There's money laundering, bribery, cash pay haircuts and manicures running rampant in the street. Sir, they're even exchanging their lowest coin currency for paper bills. You don't mean... That's right, sir. Pennies on a dollar. Indeed, beam me up, Scotty, from this planet of anarchists who are uh, in non-compliance with federal tax laws. Um, Ridiculous, as I'm sure you can see, but... Ridiculous doesn't even quite describe what's really wrong with this video. Perhaps that is made more explicit in the Associated Press and other stories that came out at the time that this was first shown to the public, years after it was shown to IRS agents at an annual training meeting. Uh, IRS calls Star Trek parody video a mistake. Nobody's going to win an Emmy for a parody of the TV show Star Trek filmed by Internal Revenue Service employees at an agency studio in Maryland. Instead, the IRS got a rebuke from Congress for wasting taxpayer dollars. The agency says the video, along with a training video that parodied the TV show Gilligan's Island, cost about $60,000. The Star Trek video accounted for most of the money, the agency said. The IRS said Friday it was a mistake for employees to make the six-minute video. It was shown at the opening of a 2010 training and leadership conference but does not appear to have any training value. (laughs) And yes, you can go and watch the full six-minute video if you'd like. Uh, It is now available online, and you can go watch it. And yes, it has no training value of any sort whatsoever. It's just that, oh, you know, we're going to find these tax dodgers and stop them before they turn everyone into anarchists. (laughs) It's it's as ridiculous as it sounds and, (laughs) and looks as you can tell from that somewhat pixely and blurry uh, low-resolution video that uh, that came out during the congressional inquiries into this waste of taxpayer money. But if only, if only this internal government propaganda was about wasting taxpayer money, then it would just be a regular government boondoggle. But unfortunately, it is about something more insidious than that. Like all propaganda, it is designed to brainwash its recipients. And although that Star Trek parody example is pretty ham-handed and probably not going to brainwash anyone into anything they didn't already believe. There are other examples, slightly more dramatic, if still rather cheesy, especially from today's perspective of uh, production techniques, but ones that start to influence, sometimes subtly, sometimes not so, the thinking and, uh, and reaction patterns of people in positions of importance in national security. What am I talking about? Well, people like those, oh, I don't know, in DARPA.
parcel has been delivered. Ah, the dramatic opening to Cyber Security Defense, the 2001 propaganda production of DARPA slash SPAWAR, which is the Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command, but I'm given to understand it's recently changed its name. Regardless, it was an internal government propaganda project that was released in 2001 and was dug up, I should give full credit, by Brock West uh, during the course of his research and finding footage for the Silicon Valley podcast. This is one of the things he stumbled across and directed uh, put, uh, it to my attention, which I'm glad he did so because it is an interesting propaganda production. And uh, incidentally, I hope people give full props to Brock and the incredible work he's doing uh, putting these videos together and editing them and the incredible work he did, for example, on that Silicon Valley podcast. But let's, let's examine the propaganda function of a video like this and what it's, uh, what it's conveying to the recipients of this message, who at that time in 2001 were agents of the U.S. federal government, uh, DARPA and SPAWAR employees uh, specifically. And although you don't get it from that opening scene, please do go watch the full 22 minutes of this uh, propaganda production if you're so inclined. Although I will uh, note that one of the comments on this video, uh, wow, the paranoia would be infectious if this video didn't come off as a rejected cutscene from a budget video game out of the 90s, <laughs> is a very apt comment <laughs> if you go and watch this. But in a more serious vein, uh, this goes on to talk about a fictional war scenario between Karak, Karak, which is invading longtime U.S. ally Endabia, and it shows the map several times during the video, and it is Iraq and Saudi Arabia there. It's just one of those U.S. government exercises where they use fictional names for very real countries. Oh no, we weren't training to invade Iraq. We were training to invade Karak. No, we weren't training for a, you know, Chinese invasion. We were training for a Handobian invasion, whatever nonsense they come up with. So, in this case, Karak is the target of this propaganda. And the story involves, basically, there's a coordinated attack that's going on on DoD uh, systems that uh, DARPA and its pals have to thwart. And they eventually discover that uh, the entire Iraq is being directed by a transnational collection of cyber terrorists controlled and funded by Karak. Well, there you go. And so, of course, Karak is the enemy, and then they must be uh, wiped out. Um, now, obviously, this was produced in 2001, uh, presumably pre-9-11, although I'm not certain on that. But at any rate, in 2001, in the first year of the Bush administration and the neocon cabal that came in and that we know from day one, in fact, from before day one, was talking about the need to invade Iraq. So is it all that surprising that a federal government agency starts producing propaganda videos about the next major war with Karak and uh, how they are, you know, that, that dastardly Middle Eastern cyber terror threat is coming to invade America by, by uh, cyber means. Ridiculous on its face, but this was the type of propaganda conditioning that the U.S. government's own employees was under in that crucial time in the lead up to or in the immediate wake of 9-11 and the beginning of the war on terror, where, of course, the jujitsu move was always to say, yeah, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Afghanistan, Iraq. That was always the move that was coming, and it was the seeds of that was being planted very early on. But it is not just this particular propaganda video that we can point to in this regard. We can talk talk about something else that you may have heard of in the past, but if not, you should familiarize yourself with it. Do you remember the fictional bioterror drill that the U.S. government was running in, uh, in 2001, shortly before 9-11? Operation Dark Winter. On day six of the smallpox epidemic, the White House confirmed that federal government officials and military personnel are being vaccinated. 300 people have died. At least 2,000 are infected with smallpox. Smallpox symptoms are being seen in 15 states, also in Canada, Mexico and England. 
The U.S. smallpox vaccine supply continues to shrink as officials try to stretch limited stocks to cover the entire nation. An official announcement regarding the remaining vaccine inventory is expected later today. Struggles to get vaccinated led to violence in some cities. Profound economic losses are crippling the nation. In Oklahoma alone, economic experts project severe losses in the state's multi-billion dollar agricultural commodities market. Still, no group claims responsibility for unleashing the deadly smallpox virus. But NCN has learned that Iraq may have provided the technology behind the attack to terrorist groups based in Afghanistan. Yes, indeed. That was one of the videos that was produced for Operation Dark Winter, which was a fictional scenario that was being wargamed out on June 22nd and 23rd, involving some high-level U.S. government officials. Obviously, again, we're talking about during that Bush, first Bush administration, uh, the Bush Jr. administration, the first year of the Bush Jr. administration, and uh, <coughs> involving high-level government officials and real-life reporters, for example. New York Times reporter Judy Miller, does that ring a bell? Was one of the people playing New York Times reporter Judy Miller in this fictional scenario that involved these produced news segments that were talking about how the situation was developing and feeding that information to the participants in this drill in June 2001 about a bioterror attack on the United States. In this case, a smallpox attack, although anthrax is eventually listed as part of uh, part of this scenario. Extremely interesting. So if you are not familiar with that, the videos that were produced for this drill are available online. In fact, from Media Monarchy uh, YouTube channel. And if I remember correctly, I think it was me talking about and, and highlighting some of this in a very early Corporate Report podcast episode and pointing people to uh, the Media Monarchy's uh, YouTube channel where these videos were being saved and cataloged. Uh, I think that was how we first made contact. Uh, my first ever contact with James M. Pilato, if I remember correctly, was through this Operation Dark Winter and me talking about that on the podcast. Anyway, just a little side nugget for you. But in case you don't remember about Operation Dark Winter, uh, let's look at an article about it. This, uh, this one coming uh, uh, through Global Research by way of Washington's blog. Uh, the Pentagon's Operation Dark Winter, June 2001 bioterror exercise foreshadowed 9-11 and anthrax attacks. Coincidence or something more? On June 22nd, 23rd, 2001, some three months before 9-11 and four months before the anthrax attacks, the U.S. military held a senior-level war game at Andrews Air Force Base called Dark Winter. The scenario of this bioterrorism drill was designed to simulate a smallpox attack in three states. Numerous congressmen, former CIA director James Woolsey, New York Times reporter Judith Miller, who pushed the Iraq WMD myth as well as the false link between Iraq and the anthrax attacks, and anti-terror official Jerome Hauer all participated in the exercise. As part of this war game, scripted TV news clips were made to help make this drill as realistic as possible. At the end of one of these clips, the reporter says, Iraq must have provided the technology, uh, Iraq might have provided the technology behind the attacks to terrorist groups based in Afghanistan. Why is this interesting? Because U.S. officials intentionally linked Iraq to Al-Qaeda and 9-11 to justify the Iraq war, even though they knew there was no such connection. The claim that Iraq is linked to 9-11 has since been debunked by the 9-11 Commission, top government officials, and even, long after they alleged such a link, Bush and Cheney themselves. Indeed, Dark Winter participant Woolsey, the former CIA director, swore in court testimony that Saddam Hussein was connected to 9-11. Similarly, the government tried to falsely blame the anthrax attacks on Iraq as a justification for war. When Congress was originally asked to pass the Patriot Act in late 2001, the anthrax attacks, which occurred only weeks earlier, were falsely blamed on spooky Arabs as a way to scare Congress members into approving the bill. Dark Winter participants Judith Miller, the New York Times reporter who had long hyped bioterror th uh, ter threats through books and articles, and C CIA head Woolsey were two of the loudest voices blaming the anthrax attacks on Iraq. Woolsey was an outspoken proponent of war against Iraq even before 9-11. And then this article goes on to talk about some more of the connections between Dark Winter and what ultimately ended up taking place, including, of course, the anthrax bioterror attack in the United States that was tangentially, oh, rumors were thrown out, oh, there, there seemed to be links to Iraq, which, of course, all went out the window, and now not even the government alleges that particular conspiracy theory, but it did its job in planting that message in the minds 
of a lot of people who still connected Iraq with anthrax during the run-up to the 2003 invasion. So, there's a lot of internal government propaganda that was swirling around in 2001 specifically to prep a lot of people in positions in national security and in Congress and elsewhere to prep the mind for eventually the invasion of Iraq and for blaming terrorist events on Iraq. This was already going on before it even came to the public's attention, although it did come to the public's attention uh, shortly after the anthrax attacks took place. Operation Dark Winter, for example, did come to the public's attention and was talked about at that time in 2002, late 2001, early 2002. So it was acknowledged, but even then it was only, we aren't really prepared for a bioterror attack kind of coverage, um, rather than anything more substantive about, hmm... What did they know and when did they know it? So I think it is interesting to examine internal government propaganda. What are the government agents themselves being propagandized to believe about the world or to expect about the world? That is probably a, a very interesting question to ask at any given time. Although certainly, obviously, in 2001, in the run-up to 9-11, extremely interesting to look at what the government agents were being propaganda propagandized into believing. Because, of course, with any of these conspiracies, uh, it's the stupidest canard. Oh, you think the government was involved in 9-11, like the post man or the, the, uh, the mailman was somehow involved in it? No, no one, obviously no one is alleging that. Obviously, it was certain elements that have certain connections, both in and out of government and with other governments and blah, blah, blah. There's a million caveats that you would have to add to that. But one of them is that, of course, not every government agent is in on the plot. And that includes people in DARPA and in these other positions. Uh, they have to be propagandized to expect certain things so that when they see them in real life, they're already primed to think. Correct. I mean, Iraq. Uh, it, it's an extremely important and insidious process, and I think th these these little gems that come out here and there give us a little bit of a window and insight into that. Although, of course, th a lot of them are stupid, stupidly produced, poorly produced, nonsense videos, but they do have a deeper psychological function on the people who are ingesting these or being forced to ingest them during training exercises and what have you. Something to think about, and uh, I, of course, if there are more examples, please please do share them. I think it's interesting to take a look at this particular type of propaganda. That's going to do it for this week. I am James Corbett. Uh, that's going to do it for Propaganda Watch for this week, obviously. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and there will be more content coming out in the near future on this channel. Please stay tuned. Since the day of 9-11, we've been told what happened. Freedom itself is under attack. We've been told who to blame. The Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Osama bin Laden. Terrorists in the terrorist network. Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. We've been told what to think. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. But if you haven't seen 9-11 Trillions or 9-11 War Games, you don't know anything about 9-11. Some might ask, how in the world could the Secretary of Defense attack the Pentagon in front of its people? We had four war games going on on September 11th. $8.5 trillion. The most extraordinary coincidences in the history of mankind. We've never seen so much real world stuff happen during an exercise. It, it is, um, I was going to say terrifying. 9-11 Trillions and 9-11 War Games. Watch the documentaries for free online, or, for the first time, own them on DVD today. Go to CorbettReport.com shop for details.